my name is Wan Yi, and uh, I'm here to um, introduce this SPU project called the Holden Natural Drainage System Project, and some, we refer to it as NDS for short. Uh, thanks for having us. And Kristen is going to help me drive the slide. Here you go. Yeah, so first I want to introduce our team. You won't see my face, but my, I'm the project manager, Wan Yi Kuo. Next is going to be project planner, Shasta McKinley. And Shasta also have some video issues. So Shasta, but you can, can you say hi? Okay. Hi everyone. Actually, my video problem is fixed now. <laughs> oh, great. How did you fix that? I want to know. I just clicked okay. on the video several times. <laughs> Okay. All right. Next, I uh, would like to introduce to you our project engineer, uh, Kristen Ramey. Can you hold uh, hold up your hand and say hi? Hi, I'm Kristen. Nice yeah. to be here with everyone. Yeah. And last but not least, our communication lead, uh, Megan Meyer. Megan, would you hold up your hand and say hi? Hey, everyone. Thanks for having us tonight. Yeah. And to the right is my contact information. You know, if you have any questions, any concern, any idea, or just want to give us a, hey, good job. Here's my information, my phone number, and this is the project website that also has a list serve already set up. This information will be shown again at the end of the presentation. So you will have an opportunity to see that. All right, next. So tonight we wanna focus on a couple three pro uh, big topics. Uh, Chasta is gonna talk a little bit about project background, how it came about. And Kristen, our project engineer, would talk about the design overview and different elements that we're considering. And I will take over again to talk about coordination and outreach. And most importantly here is the Q&A session. Because you know, we're really here, our goal here is to get any input from our neighbors, uh, the neighbors of the project or the community, right? You live here, you know this area the best. I know there will be something that you would know that we don't know that would help our project be better. So anything, any question, idea, concerns, it's welcome. And if we don't have answer, we'll try to find answer for you. Okay, so now I'm gonna just uh, kick it off to Shasta. Okay. Thank you, Kristen. Um, we have a beautiful city that's surrounded by natural resources. And we get a lot of rain. Rain that falls in this neighbor's uh, neighborhood's roofs, driveways, parking lots, and streets flow into Longfellow Creek and eventually reaches uh, the Puget Sound. Each year, we get more than 12 million pounds of pollution car that's carried into our water bodies by stormwater runoff. Could you go to the, thank you. As we built up our city and our region, we changed the way rain moves over the land. When evergreen uh, forests covered our land, about half the rain that fell was intercepted by trees and evaporated back into the air. So about 50% of the rain never hit the ground. And the rain that did reach the ground, it was slowed down by irregular um, uh, and spongy forest floor and soaked into the ground. Only about 15 to 20% flowed over the surface of the land before reaching the creeks and rivers. Today, the numbers are reversed. Now about 70% or up to 70% of the rain that falls on our city rushes quickly off the hard surfaces like roofs and roads, picking up pollution as it flows. Um, the runoff and carries this pollution into our creeks, lakes, the Duwamish River, and the Puget Sound. We call it stormwater pollution, and it's the greatest water quality threat to our region, or to our, our Puget Sound. Um, thank you. Uh, so why natural drainage systems? We can't go back to the time when this land was a forest but we can retrofit our city to help it function more like that native forest. Natural drainage systems are essentially, uh, they essentially emulate nature. Uh, they collect rainwater and remove pollutants before reaching the creeks and waterways. Built between the edge of the street and the sidewalk, these landscaped areas um, treat stormwater runoff at the source. 
for this project, SDOT had worked with the community um, here on Southwest Holden Street uh, between uh, 16th and uh, 20th Avenue Southwest because of uh, traffic issues. SDOT had asked SPU if you were interested in building natural drainage systems here because of the other community benefits that natural drainage systems or NDS provide. Building NDS here presented a, an opportunity for us to continue our efforts in improving water quality in Longfellow Creek. Longfellow Creek has the second largest watershed in the city and it has the highest number of returning coho salmon in Seattle streams. But it also has the highest coho pre-spawn mortality rate because of its degraded water quality. The natural drainage systems not only improve water quality, they also provide the overall and overall aesthetics to the streetscape and provide other community benefits such as pedestrian safety by providing a buffer between the sidewalk and moving cars, improved uh, air quality, and some reduction in noise level. Next uh, slide, please. Thank you. So how do they work? Drain, uh, during rain events, stormwater from hard surfaces in your neighborhood will drain into the natural drainage systems, grasses, shrubs, other plants, and a thick layer of soil, soil filters the pollutants. The filtered stormwater seeps into a drainage pipe connecting to a downstream drainage system. The, the system is designed to water, to pond water up to six inches during large rain events. Uh, but all of the ponded water will drain into the downstream drainage system within 24 hours after a, a rain event. Next, please. These are some uh, examples of uh, completed natural drainage systems projects. SPU has been working on uh, projects like these for more than a decade. The NDS programs focuses on the city's largest uh, creek watersheds. Those are Longfellow, Thornton, and Pipers Creeks. We are currently working on projects in the Pipers and uh, Thornton uh, Creek watersheds as well. What will the system look like over time? Since NDS uses uh, living plants and shrubs to filter water, it will take a year or so for the plants to fully mature. And one of the, uh, the questions that were always asked is so who will maintain these facilities? And the answer is that Seattle Public Utilities will be responsible for maintaining these facilities. And in fact, we prefer that people not maintain them. And at this point, I'll turn it over to Kristen so she can uh, provide more specific information on this project. Thank you. Thank you, Shasta. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go over the design overview for this specific NDS project. Um, so once a location uh, within our vulnerable Creek, Creek watersheds has been identified as a candidate for an NDS water quality project, as Shasta just, just described, the project site is evaluated to determine how the NDS facilities uh, will be designed and how much water quality treatment they can provide. Several site-specific characteristics can impact design and treatment uh, and need to be considered, such as the available space in the right-of-way. The public right-of-way serves several functions, such as vehicular and pedestrian mobility uses, greening and green space, commercial uses, etc. Um, each of those require their own allocation of right-of-way space. The design must consider how the right-of-way space is, is allocated for existing and future uses and where the NDS facilities can fit given those restraints. Other elements that take up space in the right-of-way are existing and future utilities, both below ground like water mains and above ground like power lines and power poles. Uh, the design must try to avoid these utilities, and if they cannot be avoided, uh, consider if the utility relocation is appropriate. Um, in addition, uh, site-specific topography also needs to be considered in design. The topography impacts drainage patterns or where the polluted stormwater likes to flow naturally, uh, 
um, and therefore plays a key role in siting the NDS facilities. It doesn't make sense to put an NDS facility on the top of a hill where stormwater can't reach it. Outside the physical elements at the project site, the design must also consider regulatory requirements that are, govern govern that are governing improvements at this location. Regulatory requirements determine, among other things, what other improvements the NDS project will need to install, like ADA ramps, trees, and new pavement. Uh, just as valuable as the technical and regulatory considerations, however, is input from the community. Community knowledge, thoughts, and opinions are valuable contributions and will be considered in the design, as well as the unique character of the neighborhood and the context of the surrounding area, be it residential, commercial, or mixed use. All of these elements and more were considered in the preliminary design of NDS facilities at this specific location, which I'll now go through in more detail. So this is a closer look at the project site. The project site is located on Southwest Holden Street between 16th Avenue Southwest and 17th Avenue Southwest and along portions of 17th Avenue Southwest as well. At this location, uh, Southwest Holden Street and uh, 17th Avenue Southwest are residential neighborhood yield streets. However, Southwest Holden Street is wider than it should be given that classification, providing us an opportunity to relocate some of that right of way space for NDS facilities. Near the project site are notable non-residential entities like uh, Seattle Fire Department Station Number 11. Um, the fire department regularly, regularly uses Southwest Holden Street to provide emergency services, and so the project team is making sure their needs are considered, as well as those of neighboring residences and businesses. So uh, the design itself will focus mostly on the south side of Holden and the east side of 17th Avenue Southwest. On Southwest Holden Street, the project will be making adjustments to the south curb line highlighted here by moving the curb line approximately five feet north into the roadway. Within this newly widened planting strip uh, and the existing planting areas on Southwest Hold on, on 17th Avenue Southwest, the project will be installing NDS facilities to provide water quality treatment. Um, these improvements will necessitate improvements at the intersections of 16th and 17th Avenue Southwest as well. Um, Impacted driveways will also be accommodated and upgraded to standards. However, the existing sidewalk will remain to only to be replaced in kind if it is damaged during construction. Um, as shown, uh, currently improvements are planned at the highlighted locations here. However, the project is also considering um, improvements at the southwest corner of 17th Avenue and Holden Street. And I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Wan Yi to talk about project coordination. Yeah, I, I love the animation. Thank you, Kristen. Yeah, now I'm going to jump a little bit onto the project coordination slides. OK, you are probably thinking, OK, SPU, who have you been talking to? You know, we recognize that there are a lot of things that we are proposing could impact our sister departments. So internally, we have had uh, several conversations with uh, different sister departments, such as, such as Department of Transportation, because they actually govern the right of way. So they give us a permit. Uh, the urban legend might be that we, you know, we get a wing wing and go ahead and do our work, but we don't. <laughs> We still have to get permits, just like everybody else. So, um, so we've been talking through department to department of transportation, and through them, we've been talking to the fire department. As Kristen was uh, alluding to, you know, fire department used the Holden Street, Holden Southwest Holden, as their primary route to go to a lot of places. So we are definitely interested in hearing from them, and also Seattle City Light because they actually own some pretty important power line, especially the one that's on 17th and Holden. So internally, we know there are still a lot of things needs to be hammered out, but we have had like several conversation and we will continue to have internal conversation like these with our sister departments. And then then you might be thinking, well, okay, now you're talking to your own, you know, sister department, what about outreach? So we have been actually doing quite a bit of outreach. Um, the 
the constituent we're trying to reach to include the businesses like the 7-Eleven, you know, there was the learning center, there's a coffee shop, there's a teriyaki place. So we've been trying to reach out to these business owners and also the residents along the project area. Of course, you know, we also interested in talking to community groups such as you guys, HPAC, because that's really one of the fastest, most efficient way for us to push out information. And uh, we actually just talked to, uh, just connected with West Seattle blog. We already heard back. We have already heard back from some of the uh, audience about um, their, their questions and concern. And we will talk to um, Seattle home zone neighborhood people. And you may belong to one of the listserv of the home zone program. So you may hear from us again. So definitely we're going through what we can to reach out to as many people as we can. And the activities that we'll be doing or have done already includes the door knocking. Actually, uh, my, uh, my coworker, Megan, that you saw, and also Sam was also in this call. The three of us went out yesterday. Oh boy, it was raining a cold. <laughs> And it was not fun, but you know, we got to meet a lot of one on one with a couple homeowners, thanks to the guy, the own homeowner who told us that he planted a tree in the right of way, he would really love us to save it. If we can, there was this couple that has the cutest dog and they told us that they want us to plan it, you know, plan out and NDS in front of the property. And this man basically invited us to his garage so that we are not like when we talk to him, so we're not like drenched. So we have a lot of conversation with the uh, the folks and we consider it very successful because we didn't get chased by dogs. <laughs> we didn't get yelled at. So it was great. And we got some really good support and information. And uh, we also have sent out a letter to explain our project to the neighbors of our project. And we probably will send out more letters later on. But right now we're focusing on, you know, people who will probably be directly impacted by a project. Then again, we have a project website. We have our email list served. You can sign up to get uh, information and updates. And of course, we're doing presentations such as this to push out our information to our community. Then during construction time, we will be giving our construction notices and we will definitely have an on-site construction engineer there to kind of help with the day-to-day -day, uh, challenges. So you might see him or her out there during construction time. And we will be continuing to do any number of these activities throughout the different phases of our project. Right now we are in planning phase and we're gonna be doing something like that in design and construction phase. Okay, there you go. This is the timeline. Where are we? We are where we are called the option analysis, which is really essentially a planning phase. We would like to conclude the planning phase in 2020 in a couple months. So now is like the perfect time for the community, anyone who care to share information with us so that we can get this input and then carry it to our design, which we'd like to start in 2023, early 2023. And then we sure would love to construct in 2024. However, it really depends on how smooth the project goes. It may be 2025 before we can do the construction, but we're aiming for 2024. And one of the question about timeline, usually I get from people are like, you know, they are like, well, we you know when, how long the construction is gonna last? Because that, that truly will impact, you know, the, the people who live around the project. Well, at this point, we don't even have the project really nailed down. We're not in design. So I can't give you a very good answer, but I know that it's not fair to just tell you it's coming and not give you any idea, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put myself out there and just say probably about three months, but please don't hold it against me. <laughs> I won't know until the project is in a very good place. All right, so next. So the next step is really any feedback we got back from this presentation, we would like to incorporate as much as we can. And then we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna start our preliminary design probably January. And then we would continue to engage the community during the design phase, which would be probably the entirety of 2023, maybe partially 2024. So that about to conclude the meat of our uh, presentation. I want to thank my team to make this presentation possible. 
an HPAC for allowing us to be here and all the participants to give us your attention and interest in this project. 